Hello, John Conley here. In this episode, we're going to talk about bouncing to disk. How do I take a multi-track session in Pro Tools and output a stereo file that I can send to iTunes or whoever? All right, so in this example, I have a, a session. It's a multi-track session. I'll play a little bit of it. All right, there you go. It's got audio, it's got MIDI, it's a variety of things. I want to turn this into a stereo file. The way I do that is through the file menu bounce to disk option. Now, before I do that, there's a couple of things I want to point out. It's important that you define where the beginning of the bounce and the end of the bounce, or the beginning of the song is what I really should say, and the end of the song is. And the way you do that is just by making a selection. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And this song starts, oh, one other thing too, I have a click in this track. I want to make sure that the click is turned off. I just turn the click off. Let's make sure. Yeah, if I leave the click on, that's going to be included in my bounce. I don't want the click there. So this song starts very abruptly right at bar one. All right, so there's my cursor at bar one, and it ends all the way down here. And I just held my shift key. I dropped my cursor at bar one, held my shift key, and clicked towards the end. And you can see that I've made a selection for the whole duration of the song here. Now, the other thing I've done here is I've added a master fader, which is not mandatory, but it's a good idea when you're bouncing to disk for a couple of reasons. Number one, it allows you to apply some processing to the entire song. In this case, I have a Maxim uh, plugin. This is one of the stock Dynamics plugins in Pro Tools that allows me to get just a little bit more gain, and it puts a ceiling on it so that I don't have any peaks of audio that will, will go above that ceiling and clip. I usually take the ceiling down to about 0.5, minus 0.5 of a dB or so. All right, 0.4. And then the threshold, I'll bring down slightly until I get the volume that I want without just killing it with volume. But um, So you do that to taste. So I have a Maxim on there. You might put an EQ plug-in on the Master Fader to do some overall EQing. That might be an option. And then uh, you might add a dither plugin. If you know that you're bouncing from a 24-bit session, for example, like I am, down to 16, you might want to apply dither. We go into dither and what it does in another video, so make sure you check that out. So I have a dither plugin on here. But more importantly on this master fader, if I want to do a fade out at the end of the song, I would do it with the master fader, right? So my master fader is down at the bottom of the track, and I'm going to click towards the end here. And I want to fade out to start right around there towards the end. And I'm just going to uh, command click on a Mac and on a PC. I think it's control click, but I'll verify that. Command click again and just draw a ramp down or a fade out on the master fader volume. Now this is the master fader at the bottom of my track list here. And let's listen to that fade out. Now, of course, you might want to tailor that a little bit and kind of tweak it and ramp it up. Or if you have a control surface, you might want to use a fader, a touch-sensitive motorized fader, to, to, to actually ride that uh, fade out so that it's maybe a little bit more musical. Let's listen to it now. Okay, that's good. All right, so I have, I'm going to put my cursor at the very top. And I'm going to shift click near the end. And I want this selection to be, to include that fade out. So I'm going to have the fade go, I mean the selection just go a little bit farther than the fade out. Now, the selection that you make does not have to include all tracks. It can be on one track only. In fact, let's do that. I'm just going to go here all the way back, but I do want to make sure that it starts right at the downbeat so that when somebody plays this audio file, it immediately plays music. So I'm going to shift click and make my selection start right at one bar. There it does. I'll zoom out again. Okay, so I've got a selection. It's a little bit long. I'm going to shorten it up so that it ends just after 
the fade out on the master volume track is complete. Now I'm going to go to the file menu, bounce to disk. And I want this disk, I mean, uh, this bounce to disk to be um, the output of the main stereo output, which it is. The file format, I can do WAV, AIFF, or MP3. Or if I do WAV or, or AIFF, I can add MP3 to it as well, which I'll do here. This is important, the format. I want this to be an interleave file, and what that means is this session I've mixed in stereo, right, across the left and right speakers. I want the, the stereo file that is created out of this to maintain that stereo imaging. So it's going to be an interleave file, which means that both the left and the right channels of the stereo mixed down are included in a single file. So if I hand this off to somebody to go onto their iPod or their phone or whatever, their USB drive, they are getting both the left and right channels of audio in a single audio file, so interleaved. 24-bit, if I'm going to CD, it has to be 16-bit and it has to be 441k sample rate, right? Wave or AIFF, either one is fine. I would probably go with Wave. I'm gonna have an MP3 created at the same time. Format is interleaved. Bit depth is 16 bit. Sample rate is 441, and I can name it here. So I'm gonna call this, Lucky is the name of the song, Bounce to Disc, and I'm just gonna call it Lucky Bounce. How about that? It's by default going to go into the session folder that I'm in, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. I like this. There's a folder that's created automatically by Pro Tools called Bounced Files, and, and by default, that's where this file will land, and I like that. The offline button is also important. That means that this bounce to disk is going to happen faster than real time. Right now, I've got a selection made in my timeline, right, from the very beginning to the end of the song. It's roughly uh, two, two minutes and three seconds, or 84 bars. If I uncheck offline, it's going to take two minutes, or real time, to complete this bounce. If I check the offline box, it's going to do it faster than real time, which is what I want to do here. I'm going to hit bounce. And here's the MP3 window. Since I checked the MP3 checkbox, it's asking me what information do I want to add pertaining to my MP3 file. I'll leave it at its default. And there we go. So right now, based on the speed of my computer, based on what's going on in this session in terms of plugins and automation and all that stuff, it's bouncing at 5.3 times real time. Actually, the, the selection is three minutes long. Okay, so here's the folder, the session folder of the session that I'm in right now. And you'll see here's the bounced files disk, uh, the bounced files folder that was just created and inside it I should see two files and I do here's the wave version now this is a stereo audio file and here's the mp3 version they both have the same name but the extension is different so they can be so and I'm just gonna hit uh, the spacebar on my Mac and should preview it and the music starts right when the file starts, which is good. I want that. I don't want a bunch of empty space at the beginning of the audio file. So there is my bounced file. Now you can choose to bounce that to another location if you want. I like to bounce it into the bounced files folder of the session that I'm in. So at a later time when I come back to this session, I can easily go to that folder and audition that file and say, oh yeah, this is the session that that song is or whatever. It's an easy way to see what's going on within this session without having to open it. Open it. All right, so to recap, uh, bounce to disk, preferable to create a master fader, you don't have to. Master fader gives you a little extra functionality, fade out, processing on the uh, entire song. Make a selection of where you want the bounce to start and where you want to, it to end. The selection in the timeline, which I have on my master fader, does not have to be across all tracks. The selection can exist on one track only if you want, or all tracks, it doesn't matter. You're basically telling Pro Tools, start here, and end here in your timeline. Then go to File Menu, Bounce to Disk, 
choose wave or AIFF if you choose if you prefer format is interleaved if you're going to CD it's 16 bit 44 1 if you're not going to CD you can keep it at 24 bit 48k or whatever sample rate and bit depth your session is um, currently set to that's fine as well um, add mp3 if you want to name the uh, file choose the directory by default it puts it into the session folder bounced files folder and offline of course it will do this faster than real time if you have a really fast computer it will do it even faster than what you saw here and there you have it bounce to disk